Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game playthrough. I'm here with Chris Birch, and he is with Modiphius from the UK. And we're going to be playing the game The Elder Scroll V Skyrim, the adventure game, currently on GameFound. It's running up to about a million dollars right now. And we're going to be trying out chapters, chapter one of six. The, the campaign's called The Blades, and the chapter one is called Tainted Haven. I haven't played the game, I've just looked into it, and we're kind of going to do a, it's a run through. He'll explain the game. Game. I'll do my best to follow along and then um, talk a little bit about the game and his previous campaign as well, which you guys, they guys did, they did a uh, Elder Scroll Call to Arms, kind of a Warhammer esque Elder Scroll game. I've been a big fan of Elder Scrolls, uh, played it way too much in the past, and I'm looking forward to trying the game out because this is something I'd probably play, probably play even more. Uh, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the game. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pick the color blue if that works for you. Okay, sure, sure. I'm red. Uh, just a few notes um, that this is stripped back, so there's there's a lot left um, in all the decks. Um, it's really to give people a flavour of what the um, first chapter is like. Uh, particularly, we don't have the market deck, so you can't buy and sell equipment. You can still sell equipment to get money, buy stuff, which we'll come to. Uh, a lot of the graphics have changed. Um, some of the card actual designs. We've uh, done some work on uh, making the game more colourblind friendly. Uh, based on some comments, which were really useful. And um, the art, uh, we do use in-game art. We're unable to create new art, but we have been doing a lot of work to improve the images uh, coming out of the game engine. So I think people are going to see a really nice difference there. Excellent. And um, you can, anyone can go to Tabletop Simulator, uh, grab this mod and play it themselves. It's completely free. And uh, hopefully with our little tutorial here it might be a little easier for them to, to just jump in. Oh. And actually, as a, as a point, something people do ask, if you see the uh, menu at the top of the page, if you subscribe to the mod, uh, just open up a server, open up a game table, go to the game button at the see next to games, objects, music, the game button, click on there. Uh, then you would click on workshop and you should see the mod there. So it's very easy to load in. Excellent. Yeah, it didn't take us much to, to get in here and, and take a look at it. And it's already yeah. preloaded, too, which is nice. My wife did a tabletop simulator for her game, and uh, she helped, she did all the coding and all that herself, which was pretty impressive. I know it takes a lot of time and effort to get this stuff done. Does, yeah, yeah. And the uh, the guys have done a great work. There's a nice there's a numbered card deck here, and rather than having to right-click and search, you just type the number in, and it spits out the card for you, which is pretty awesome. Oh, that's nice. And if you accidentally put one, pull one out, you just drop it back in and it resorts it. Um, in the actual game, we've got a really nice uh, card sorter with card dividers, so 100 up through 600. And it's enough to hold all the cards in all the expansions that are numbered. And it's, it's wrapped with the Skyrim Stone Relief, you know, that you see in the trailer. Right. Uh, so it looks really cool. And that's um, to help you organize the, all the numbered cards. So I'll give you, um, I'll give you a kind of quick overview, and then we're going to dive in. All right. Level up your character with a wide range of unique skills and abilities. Play through six chapters of two huge campaigns in this endlessly replayable adventure game. The Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, the adventure game. So it's an adventure game, right? So, um, uh, you know, if you know games like Runebound, um, Defenders of the Realm, and, and uh, I mean, there's a million of them, but it's your, you're moving around your character on a map of the, the world, and you're going to various locations to, to do quests and dungeons and, uh, you know, complete the storyline. You're going to be leveling up your character, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. And... Um, it's very much, you know, this is your chance to go back to Skyrim with friends and see a very uh, pretty deep, um, evolving narrative story unfold. Every, every decision you make on a card is going to affect the rest of the campaigns, like we're talking all six chapters. One decision you make will have a far-reaching effect all the way through the game and could so affect the other. you kill a civilian... On accident, of course. Uh, that civilian yeah. may not be in the game in the next chapter. Yeah. So actually, there's a there's a little deck top left um, of the board called the Blades, 
Uh, these are other members of the blades. The blades are this like super cool force that were uh, designed to protect the empire, and um, you're being you're being hunted. What we see in the story now. If you fail some quest, they're going to die. These are really awesome cards that could appear in this chapter or the next chapter or the chapter after that. And if they die, they're gone for good. You'll never see them again until you reset the whole campaign and start again. Oh. And so it has. And also, there's various encounters. If you follow the encounter, that encounter will go away forever, and you won't see that NPC again. But you get their quest. Um, various things if they die creatures and so on again you won't you may not see them again so the game evolves and your choices could affect another player's choice some cards uh, well all, all the quest cards have two numbers on them you'll see and uh sometimes those numbers are shared with other quest cards and if i picked a choice that said 273 and you had a card which said 273 you then have to go to 274 and that story has now changed the, the, uh, your fate. Yeah, it's like a legacy style uh, path. Now, a lot of these games have big books. You know, we've seen a lot of games on Kickstarter where they've got a really big book of um, paragraphs. So we wanted to put the story into people's hands. We think the cards are easier, but this lets us have this evolving story where the cards get discarded and the numbers, the numbering system, the way we've built that in diverging story means the story evolves with what you do and you can't do that with a book of because it's fixed in place gotcha so um without going let's let's kind of dive into the actual gameplay itself and okay. um a bit of the story so if you come over to the numbered deck i pulled out this card 209 we always have a card that is the um starting card okay uh can you see that yes. so uh, this is the story. It's year 175 of the Fourth Era. And for those who know their Skyrim lore, that means we're 25 years uh, before um, some dude um, arrives at Helgen to be executed and uh, becomes a dragonborn. The Great War rages across Tamriel. A group of young blades recruits go on their first mission, a patrol around the forests of Cyrodiil. A Thalmor ambush catches them off guard and they barely escape alive. Upon returning to the camp, they find it desolated. The Thalmor have been here. Cyrodiil is not safe for them anymore. They escape to Skyrim, far from the Thalmor's clutches. And in Skyrim, the Reachmen have conquered Markarth, and tensions between them and the Nords are rising. So this sets the scene and tells us on the back any special rules. There's no special rules for this chapter, but there is one condition. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's chapter failure. If a main quest card reaches, and this symbol is threat, its threat limit, the chapter is lost, and we will draw card 212. Okay. What Threat is, our, is a bit of a timer in the game, but it also frees you to do lots of stuff, which I'll show you. Now, we believe in uh, celebrating incompetency. So you never fail the game, and that's it. Put everything back in the box because you suck. Go away and think about how bad you are and come back next week and try again. You always can keep playing. Every chapter, every quest card, if you fail it, bad things happen. Blades die. You maybe don't get some rewards, uh, but you can keep going. Uh, in this case, the main quests are quite critical. If you fail them, the world turns and the next chapter you would start is going to get a lot harder. Okay. So you can just keep playing, or you could go, that was really fun. It's a bit like playing Pandemic, right? You get to the end, oh, no, we lost it, but let's go and do it again. But in this case, oh, no, you just keep going. And, um, and okay. that will have consequences. And it's fun, right? It's fun to see how the world will react. It feels kind of like a legacy game of sorts as well, then. Yeah, for sure. Do new cards uh, enter based on what you do, or is it mainly just each campaign will present different cards based on choices. So there are event cards. If you, if you complete certain event cards, they add new events to the deck, which aren't in the deck at the moment, and stay with you. If you... Um, uh, we've got that four. If we... Um, <clears throat> yeah, so certain events and quests will trigger enemies that enter the dungeon decks, and the dungeon decks start getting bigger with all these very powerful enemies. So the game is evolving based on our choices. Okay. Right. We have, guess what? 
uh, every Skyrim game starts with um, you being uh, arrested or trapped or something. So if you say stop, I'm gonna. All right, I won't look. Uh, stop. All right, okay, I did stop. You've got framed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just pick the next one. I put this next to my character board. Now, yeah, uh, who do you want to be? So this is your first decision. Um, we've got six characters in the game, and we've just got four of them in this version. You've got the High Elf, or the Ultima. You've got the Nord. So the High Elf obviously favors magic. The Nord favors two-handed weapons and smithing. You've got the Imperial, who's lucky with treasure and is a bit of an all-rounder. And you've got the Khajiit, who obviously is great at sneaking and stealing money from everyone. Okay, I think I'll go with the Imperial. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put your so you put your quest at the far right. Let's have yeah. a quick look at your car, your uh, player board now. So you'll see you've got a character card and your miniature on the left-hand end. Yep. So um, the character card, they're double-sided. You've got a male and female version, both the same, uh, just for preference. And in this case, you've got a, a female miniature. In the uh, miniatures upgrade box, you get alternate sculpts of everyone. So, as you can see, the um, Imperial and all characters have a kind of once-per-game-turn skill. In the case of the Imperial, um, she's pretty lucky. So when she draws a B treasure, um, an A treasure, or a Dragon treasure, she can lose a health to draw two and pick the best one. And then below that, you have um, some extra abilities if you learn these skills. In this case, if she learns Block... Um, and she has a shield equipped, she gains one red armor. If she learns restoration, she will heal an extra health point whenever she does healing spells. This okay. will become make more sense as we go through the game. Now, your character board is pretty standard fare. You've got slots to put various equipment, a helmet, armor, left and right hand uh, weapons, or a double-handed in the middle, Boots and wearables. In this case, you can have t up to two wearables and two potions. Potions are kind of like um, ingredients or, or, or formulas. Uh, in this case, you, you know how to make a potion of healing with two plant tokens. Okay? Okay. And then below it, you've got four spaces for your backpack and a couple of statuses because all sorts of things might happen. You might become wanted... Uh, in Dawn Guard, you gain vampirism and all sorts of fun stuff. And then inside the board, this is one of those two layered boards that uh, Scythe made famous. Yes, uh, and well, you, you, you'll be able to stick things in there, basically. Yeah, exactly. So you've got a space for your XP, a space for your gold septums, a space for your components. We have three components in the game, uh, soul gems, ore, and plants. And then you've got uh, eight slots here for your skills. So, as you might guess, it says 7 here. If you get 7 XP, you trade them in, and you gain your first skill. And then 8 gets you your next skill, and so on. When you fill this block up, you can start turning the skills over to their legendary size, which are way more powerful. Ooh, okay. And then, of course, you have your main stats. Um, health, stamina, and magicka, which are used to power your different attacks. and um, Keep tests. you alive. Yeah, basically, yeah. Right, uh, now, who am I going to be? You're the Imperial. I'm going to be the Khajiit, I think. Now, if you have a look at the Khajiit, he's basically really sneaky. He can lose a wound to gain an extra sneak skill during his turn. He starts with claws, which is quite useful if we run out and lose our gear. And I... Basically, I can learn the sneak skill to get more sneak. We'll show you how sneak works. It's really fun. Or I can learn pickpocketing and gain money every time I do an encounter. Right, so let's let's start with you. I'm going to give you the first player token. You also start with uh, two plant tokens. All the tokens are at the top of the board. Here. Just so you, you can see, we've got um, six types of wandering monster in the base game. Is you've got threats and the various uh, gold experience and components, and then we've got our um, quest markers. Uh, mine's red, yours blue, and then the various skills. We've also gotcha. got some horses because we can get horses too. Let's grab my quest. So what you want to do is um, read your quest card. All right, here. let's go ahead. 
I see a familiar face in the crowded streets of solitude. Nidalus Juris, a man I knew before I joined the Blades. When I approached him, he starts screaming, Murderer! In a matter of minutes, I'm arrested and chained to a wall in the dungeons of Castle Door. The man guarding me openly claims my arrest is an injustice. I manage to sway him to help me escape. Once released, I track down my accuser. He is not hard to find. Living in the poorest quarter of the city, I break into his house and find a mysterious note. And then flip All the set. card. Okay. So you go. All we right. Carry on. Dearest Nidalus, you've known so many people through the years. Many of them joined the Blade's cause. You recognize their names on the backs of this letter. If you manage to work your influence and get them arrested, you'll be glad that you did. M Moivra Karnai. Karnai, oh, yeah. <laughs> on the back of the letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. I place your figure, uh, place your figure in solitude. Okay, so um, do that first. So you got okay. your character here. I take my dude, and I'm going to find solitude on the map here somewhere. Yeah, and top left. And right there. Okay. Boop. So, um, and then. You've got two options. This is this is what I described as this is where the, your story is now about to diverge in different directions. Yeah. So, um, do you want to recruit a mighty warrior to help you find Moiva or reach out to someone wiser than you? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm uh, fairly wise, so we'll go ahead and recruit a warrior. Okay. So I'm going to uh, get uh, card 168, and we're going to choose two pieces of equipment for you. If you come to the... There's the equipment deck here at the top, um, which is this block. I'm just going to spread it out. It should be easier. Yep. I can choose any uh, one I want. Yeah, so you've got there's two hide armor, two iron armor, two battle axes, which are two-handed. There's so, iron daggers. There's a shield. Remember, uh, you are you get a benefit with um, if you equip a shield. Yes. Uh, what else have we got? We've got novice robes for magic user, bark spells. Oops. Okay, and uh, it tells you on the side, top right, if it's a two-handed weapon or not. So I'm looking like a shield for sure, and I guess a sword, huh? Yeah, I think that's a good combination for you because you definitely benefit on your character card if you um, if you get um, a shield and you level up. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and take these guys. Put that in one of your hands. So what you could do is put the fists and the fist down below your card. Uh, if you, for some reason, it can happen, you don't need to put them in your backpack. Just put them further below. Where exactly? Oh, I would just put it down for much further below your card, your player card area. Just okay. put it out of the way. Here we go, yeah. You can put it. I'll, I'll just place that guy there, right? Okay. So, yeah, so then it's... You've got basically, in each hand, you've got a shield and a sword. You've still got your ragged robes. You've got a bit of armor left. And that's it. And um, then what's the card you picked? You picked 168. So let's go and get that. Get these out And you can way. literally just click on this here and type in 168. Yeah. yeah. And then I push, what, enter here? Enter. No, you should if you type 168 and then press return. It should spit it out. Can I just grab it as well? Oh. Okay, easy. There you go. Rumors at the inn. Yeah, so bring that down to your card, and that replaces your current. Here, I'll just put it down Quest, here. Quest, right? Yeah, there you go. Now, let's have a look. This is, um, so this is um, an actual, so that first card is your, your like starting setup story. So this is actually your first quest. So let's look at the structure of it. So, first of all, you know that you need to go to Morthal for this quest. So you've got a little quest token from Skyrim there, and you grab one of your blue quest tokens from the quest, from the quest marker area at the top, and put the token on Morthal, just here. So yeah, I've got far to go. Um, now the little number below that is, um, there's a little number in a square, which yeah. says zero. That means you can be level zero to do this. It's probably within your power. Uh, not too hard, but if that was like a one or a two, it's the game is telling you you probably want to be level one before you go and do this because it's it's harder. Gives you like a difficulty kind of meter. Yeah, I mean you can still do it, but it's giving you a bit of warning. The number here four is threat. So at the beginning of every turn, um, and we haven't actually start. We're still in the kind of setup turn when we start right. the first turn. 
uh, the first player will draw an event card. The event cards always give us threat. This is like the subtle timer for the game. If you end up putting four threat on this card, this main quest will fail, which isn't good. <laughs> so um, if you gain side quests, they can also absorb threat. And we can split the threat between us to help um, reduce it. And we can also put threat on the towns. If you have a look at the main board, uh, there's a whole section here. Um, each of the main towns are listed with little threat spaces. So you can put threat on a town, making it unstable, which means you can't buy or sell there. You can also put threat, again, meaning it's closed. It's going to cost you five septims to get in the town. And finally, a third one would make the town rioting, which means it starts generating threat, which is a really bad idea. Yeah, but as it you sounds can like see, I don't want to do. Yeah, but when the game gets really crazy, you are going to be pushed to be like, oh, no, what do we do? What do we do? And the other symbols, just so you know, to the right, they tell you which market decks you can buy and sell from and whether um, you can see in the case of Solitude, you make more money selling stuff. You get an extra septum for everything. And where you see a component uh, with a number, it means it only costs four, not five. Components always cost five okay. to buy. And but, then they'll uh, range. Sometimes it'll be more expensive or less expensive yeah. depending on the town. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. So um, you don't need to read any more down below on this card, but there is a clue. The game helps you a bit. If you look down the bottom, you can see the objective is going to be to create a distraction that you are going to need. Um, if you have the illusion skill, it would help you roll more dice. But if you had soul gems, you could push. Push means you get to roll more dice than the standard three. Um, and you only need to push if you fail the result. You can then spend as many soul gems at one at a time to roll extra dice. It's a kind of push your luck mechanic. Gotcha. The implication is, why don't you go and get some soul gems? Because even if you've got one, you can mitigate the luck of rolling the dice here. So for those, those of you... You were like, I don't like too much luck. Okay, go and get some soul gems or get the illusion gill. You can reduce the luck, but it takes time. But and with time comes some... threat. Time comes threat. But, and we'll show you how you get components very easily, and that also leads to personal quests or side quests. Okay. Um, so you've got your card. I'm going to do mine. And what have I got? So... I'm trapped. Narinz, a traveling explorer, hires me to protect her whilst exploring some ruins. The place is quiet, yet it makes me feel uneasy. Deep in the ruins, she pulls a lever, and a cage falls right next to me, failing to trap me. We both silently stare at each other. Her disappointment is palpable. It only takes me one strike to defeat her. A note falls from my attempted captor's pocket as she falls. See? Narinz. It's been too long since we last spoke, and now I come to you asking for assistance. I need you to keep some people secure in your ruins. Their names on the back of this letter. I'll give you what you've always wanted if you do. Moiva Karnai. On the back of the letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. So I start in Whiterun. Let's, uh, uh, there we go. I'm in the middle of the map. Is there a chance that maybe both of us will start in the same location? Uh, or is there six different ones for each character? No, I think yeah, I think we do all start in different places. Um, so yes, so that you don't clash. You can be in the same place at the same time, though. It's not an issue. Um, am I going to recruit a mighty warrior or someone to? Ah, I'm going to show you what happens because that was the same. You had the option to recruit a mighty warrior. I'm going to do the same. Um, so I'm going to. Uh, choose to recruit a mighty warrior. I could go and look for someone wiser than me. So, in this case, actually, those two are the same. Um, I'm going to pick card that one six eight, but you've got that, okay? So yes. let's see what happens. I get card one six nine. So my story has changed as a result of your action. So what is my story? I need to get my equipment as well. So. Tombs and boons. Looks like I've got to go to a tomb in Whiterun. Oh, it's not too far away. But tombs are pretty dangerous. So I'm going to put my quest marker on a tomb in Whiterun. Here we go. As you'll see, if you have a look at the map where I am, the map is broken up into the holes. 
each hold there is usually at least um, one cave which is the basic type of dungeon then you have mines and then you have tombs and ruins and uh, Dwemer cities in this case there isn't one in Whiterun the next one is, no, is in the Pale and we also have wilderness spaces where you can have encounters with interesting characters but you can also meet characters in the holds as well in the gotcha. towns so that is my quest and i need to get two pieces of equipment now i'm going to pick um the hide armor and the dagger because these are really good they've both got sneak as an ability they both help me do sneak and i'll show you how that works when we have our first fight so um, my claws go away and my ragged robes so instead I've got hide armor and this iron dagger so it's hide armor's got sneak one iron dagger's got sneak one and we'll do double damage you only can sneak the first time you um, enter each dungeon encounter and I'll show you how that's going to work yeah, well, probably hard sneak. to sneak on somebody who already knows you're there well they can ambush you as well so we'll see that's coming up right now we've done our setup it's the um, now it's the first turn so first thing you do is draw an event card so let's uh, just shuffle you want to draw a uh, event card off the top and put it face up on the discard right okay so this is a world quest now this unlike the quest that we've got this is one that we all know about so as you can see the sky forge lies dormant still you can forge some weapons with it if you're in white run you can use the forge um we would need three circle designs and if we had smithing we'd be able to roll an extra dice there are just so you know on the white dice there are three circles on each um, dice then there's two triangles and one diamond um, and if we had some ore, we would be able to roll extra dice. And this is a good example of how the game also evolves. If we're successful at this quest, we're going to get 1A treasure, which are really good. Plus, we can shuffle card 150 with the top four, four cards of the event deck. That's, that will be a really good card that will help us. Um, otherwise, if we fail, we're going to degrade white run. So we'll be able to, we won't be able to buy and sell at white run. And if it could go further. And does degrade mean place a threat there? Yes, that's correct. Place a threat on the um, table above. Copy. So okay. I'm going to move this over to the world quests. You can see we have we can have up to four world quests on the side. This can also take threat. Can you see it's got two threat? Yes. So if we were desperate, we could put a threat there. But we've got to be careful. Some events will put threat on every quest on the that's out. Ooh. Okay. You really don't want to fail world quest because they can be so helpful. Right. Um, now, we've got our first turn. What do you want to do? You can, on your turn, move up to four spaces on foot. You can buy a horse or you can steal a horse later in the game. It costs money or get into trouble. There's various quests that will let you do that or events. Can you steal something and not get caught as well? Um, depends on the result of the challenge. So, so it's possible the then. Yeah. Okay. And um, you can uh, fast travel or travel on a cart. So if you are in a town, you can pay one septim per um, hold you want to cross to get to another town. So for example, you want to go from Solitude to Riften. You would cross. Um, you don't you ignore the hold you're in. You would go one, two. Three. It would cost you three septums to travel to Riften. Sometimes you might. It's a quick way of getting across the map. Okay, so it looks like I probably want to get some of the uh, blue currency, the crystals there. What would be yeah, the so best place to go to get that? Looking like get, maybe Winterhold, but that's pretty far. You could do an event in the town you're in already, in Solitude. So, Or you could go to Morthal and be in the town for where your quest is. But instead of doing a quest, you can do what's called a town if, uh, a town encounter. We've got a deck of cards up here. Um, town encounters are done in towns, not surprisingly, and wilderness uh, encounters uh, you get in wildernesses. And what they typically do is they give you a component. So it's a great way to get the stuff you need. 
They also give you a challenge that might give you a reward. And you can then get a side quest or a personal quest through them. Okay. So do you want to do one in solitude? Yes. See how it works? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just draw. Uh, let's shuffle. Oh. Oh. And then just draw the top card. No, oh. not the whole deck. Yeah. There we go. So who's this? Ref. Wrath trains horses. They're better than people. Can you show a horse? I'm Wrath. Now, you can gain any component you want. Now, you know you need um, soul gems to help you with your main quest, but you're now going to have a challenge with a reward. You can see he's challenging you to show a horse. You're going to be rolling three dice looking for two triangles. There are two triangles on each dice, so it's okay. not too bad. If you had a 0.33% on each die. Yeah. Oof. And if you had an ore, you could push. And if you're successful, you're going to get two XP and two components. So maybe the risk here is choose the ore first. So then you're more, you could win this, this um, task. And um, then your reward would be two XP and two components of your choice. Mm. <laughs> mm. Putting me at a, it's a risky situation. And, and I mean, it's one extra 33% chance is pretty good too. Yeah. Um, if I fail, I get nothing. Do I suffer any consequences? If you fail, you don't get the rewards. And of course you, you, um, I mean, you might roll so badly. You might not roll any triangles, in which case you save the component. You're not going to use it. Um, you won't get the rewards, but you can then discard this card to get quest number five which is his personal quest. And that gives you another card to absorb threat. But Ref will go away forever. We won't see him again in the entire campaign because we've we've helped him. He's no longer, doesn't need any help. So okay. if you don't take the quest, he goes back in the discard pile and someone else can find him. Knight, I'm trying to get rid of those filthy vampires. Care to help? So I can gain a component and the skill test you can push with a soul gem. So I think I'm going to do the same thing as you. Risk taking a soul gem. I mean, no no components are a bad choice because you can use soul gems and ore to upgrade your gear later. So if you start saving them up, you're going to have fun with some cool upgrades. Now, I need to roll two circles. This is a bit easier. And I get three dice. Let's see if... I can manage it. I'm going to go over to the dice. See if my dice luck holding out. And ah. no problem. Yeah, that was a lot easier. Now some of the the, the quests all differ in uh, in difficulties as well. Um. So I gain two XP. So I'm going to go and grab two XP. So that's two of the seven I need to level up first time. Put those down there. And I'm going to accept his quest, Uglum Buglums. He wants me to help him kill some vampires. So that's one, three, zero. So it's going to put that in the deck. One, three, zero. There we go. But, oh, no. Put it on that. But honor and glory. So I need to go to a tomb in Winterhold. Wow, clear three undead. That's going to be tough. We need to purge the land of this scout. Come with me. But it's good to have another side quest so we can absorb. Gives us a bit of breathing space. But the interesting thing here, we could just focus on our main quest. And we will just, we can play the game quicker. You know, maybe this first chapter you could probably play in an hour if you just focused on it. But because we've got some more quests, we've got more time to absorb threat, we're going to be able to cruise around, do some dungeons, level up a bit, take our time. So I need to put a quest marker on a tomb in Winterhold. That's over here. There's one tomb here. There's um, usually only one of any um, type of dungeon in, in each, each hold. Yeah, there is a couple of, uh, a couple like here, there's... Um, uh, ruins. There's two ruins in East March. So if there's two of, of a kind, you can choose which one. 
and um, that I've done the quest, and I, oh, I didn't use the soul gem that I got. There we go. That's the end of the turn. So it's um, first player marker moves to me. Just out of interest, if you're interested in solo play, um, you can literally just play with one character. You would use use another character card, and every other turn, the first player marker moves to that card, and on that turn, you don't draw an event card. And that is the only difference with playing solo. So are you playing with and one character or two? You just you can just play with one character. You could play with two if you like. But if you play with one character, you only draw event cards on every other turn. Oh, okay. That's the difference in the game. Gotcha. And you're, you're going to be finding, there's, I think there's like 25 followers in the game. You're going to be finding familiar followers from when, when they were adventurers who will help you. Lots of, uh, <laughs> there's even the guy was an adventurer. And he's in it too. Oh he my is, gosh. Yeah. You're going to meet the guy who took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> A solid choice to have him in the game. <laughs> so, uh, right. Uh, I'll draw an event card. Let's, what do we get? Another world quest. It's interesting. A call to arms. The companions are looking for new members during their ranks. Can you prove yourself worthy? Wow, this is another one in Whiterun. Oh, actually, we haven't put the... Let me move that over to the world quests. So what we should have done is put um, world quest markers. Uh, that's two on Whiterun. Oh, so on this one... Location. Yeah, so if you want to grab the grey ones... Yeah, the grey one's there. Just grab two of those for white run. So this one, um, if you have one hundred, two hundred, or archery, it would increase your chance. But you only need to get two circles, and you can push with plant components. So this isn't too hard. And if you succeed, you can upgrade an item. Now, that's really good, because that means you're basically forging a, an improvement to your weapon or your armour, which will give you better armour uh, or, or better weaponry. Now, uh, with our basic starting gear, it's okay, but if, if one of us manages to get a cooler piece of gear in a, in a dungeon, then it's really worth it because the better gear costs more to upgrade, so that would be a much bigger bonus. And we would get to shuffle card one, four, three with the top four cards. Again, another, this is another way for us to improve the event cards that are coming our way. Or if we fail, we're going to degrade White Run again. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, and there's yeah, two there. We, we, really, we really want to make sure we we try and do both of these if we can. Um, so, and failing mm. failing the roll here re results in a failure. But also, if there's two threat markers on it, that also would result in a failure, right? Yeah, for sure. So we oh. we can moment we can absorb. If you think about it, you've got two quest cards that can absorb. Uh, four and you've got four and three I've got four and four so um, I could absorb up to um, six you could absorb up to uh, five uh, threat so we can absorb a bit before we have to worry and so losing you want... one of these guys though, if we lose one of these objectives here for our own personal quests what's the drawback so if this fails through threat you just get the the failure result, which we'll we'll see uh, when we turn them over and, and work on one of them. If you fail a main quest, then the chapter fails. Now that doesn't mean you end the game; you just keep playing. But the next chapter is going to be harder for you. Ooh, okay, okay. It really keeps going. And a you main quest is listed on with what exactly the the smaller uh, here? Main quests are black. Side quests are have this like red, dark red color. And for those of you um, who have friends or are colorblind, then we are putting a dot, a large dot, on that top circle. So it's very clear uh, that these are the side quest cards. And can you have more than one main quest at a time? No, you can only okay. do one, you, one main quest. It can, kind of changes um, with certain situations. Yeah, it's going to, you know, you'll be moving through these. But you can have up to two side quests or personal quests. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do? I think... Hmm. Do you want to... You, uh, 
you still probably want to get some soul gems maybe but you don't have to you can take a risk and just head uh, over there and do it yeah if you fail uh side quest uh, sorry your main quest because you fail the challenge that doesn't fail the chapter you just get the fail result it's not the end of the world bad things will happen <laughs> but it, it doesn't lose us the game okay um so this is the point where we kind of think as a team, do we want to go and maybe we want to do a dungeon together. Maybe uh, maybe we should try that first so you can see how that works. And we're not far from Whiterun then, so we can always go there together if need be. Can so look, there's a cave here. Yeah? Yeah. So it's that's within movement distance. And okay. So we've moved and we're going to go over to the dungeon area on the right. Now, so, when um, you do it, like I go to that dungeon and so do you, we just don't, we just stop there until what the round ends, and we, when we perform this action, the combat area. Yeah, so that our the mo that's our movement for the turn, and right. our action um, together is doing the dungeon. So okay. We can't do anything. Can you choose to do the dungeon alone? Then I imagine you can. You could. Yeah, you could. So it's if definite... you, if that happened, would you not wait until the end after the other players moved? So who it's you you do it in order from the first player. If if I had gone to do the dungeon on my own, I would quickly do the dungeon. You might go, well, I'm going to go to, um, I'm just going to do another event in solitude, in which case you could do that whilst I'm doing the dungeon. You okay. Know, we, we encourage people to don't sit, you don't have to sit there waiting. You might want to watch. It's more fun. Um, in the dungeon, other players can roll the enemy dice for you. Um, if you're just doing some leveling up or buying and selling, you can just do that whilst other people are doing that. Nice, nice. Simultaneous turns and also cooperative yeah. simultaneous turns as well. Exactly. And this play is, how many, how many players is this game up to? Is it four or six? Four. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, have a look at the top of the little dungeon area. This is what's called a dungeon challenge card. Now, this is for the first chapter. This tells you what you're going to face in each type of dungeon. A cave is two animals. A mine is a human and animal. A tomb is an undead and a human, and so on. Okay. And then it's ruins, human and daedra, and then dwema and uh, undead. And okay. you can imagine, as we get to chapter two, three, campaign two, one, two, three, these are going to get harder and harder and bigger More of them as well? Yeah. Oof. So, okay. So these, we uh, are currently uh, in a cave, right? That's right. Okay. So we need two animals. Now, these are stacked decks. They're stacked in order, so you don't shuffle them. Uh, so we're going to draw one card. And another card. Think of these as rooms or areas of the dungeon where these are the main threats to deal with. It might be a trap. It might be a um, creature. Okay. So I'm going to turn over one at a time. Now, um, this is a good example of a creature. Got a little mud crab here. Let's see if we can make some crab sandwich So uh, for lunch. I would Top like left, you've got the level of the creature. Now, he's level zero. So a nice. very powerful monster indeed. Exactly. Now, if we had leveled up and we were level one, at the end of this dungeon, we'd discard him for, for, for good. Okay. We don't face him again in this chapter. Um, you can see that he's an animal. That's the little animal symbol there. Now, on the left, you've got the health track, which can have up to three different types of trackers on it for three different types of armor. In his case, he's got heavy armor... And he's got two points of heavy armor. And then we've got the attack that he does. Um, so we've got an enemy dice here. So um, there's one of each symbol on the dice and a blank face. So this means that he's got a two in six chance of rolling his pincer attack, which will do one red damage. Okay. Now, it also says sneak, sneak one. This is, means he has got a difficulty of one. This is like a skill test. I need one circle to sneak up and attack him for free. So let's look at my character. So if I go first, I can probably take him out. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea anyway, since you have sneak and I don't. Yeah. Now, I've got sneak one and sneak two. So all skill tests are three dice, plus whatever the skill total is. In this case, two. So I'm rolling five dice to get one of those little circles. So it's a pretty easy... Uh, yeah. Uh, chance. So let's roll this. It'll dice. be funny if you don't get it though, for sure. Okay, you, you got three. It happened. It happened. Now, 
I can now do one of my attacks without having to roll, because I've just rolled. But I do have to pay the stamina cost. So let's look at the attacks. I can attack for free, no stamina cost, and do one yellow. But sneak double, does double damage. That will do two yellow. I can pay one stamina and do four yellow. Now let's look at his health. He's got red armor. Red armor can't defend against yellow because it's red, not yellow. So any damage I do in yellow is going to go straight through. I only need to do two damage. So you so can just choose dead. that first attack, not spend stamina, and defeat the monster with two damage because you're yellow, exactly. not red. Now, if it was red, though, it would do... If it was red and I had done two damage, he's got two red. Two minus two is zero, but you always do at least one damage. If I had done instead the four damage, four red, four minus two is... is um, Two damage, so he would have taken that two damage. Okay. He would have been dead. Easy piece. But if he was purple damage, um, then um, I wouldn't have been able to... Uh, yeah, four yellow. Uh, well, four yellow again. Um, uh, oh, well, four ye yellow would have... If I'd had... Uh, sorry, we'll, we'll do <laughs> purple damage. Let's got to confuse ourselves. But yeah, so red... You always want to be doing damage, uh, a different damage to what their armor is. And if, for example, they had five red and you only did um, red damage, you would say, hey, Chris, or I would say to you, look, you can do um, that, uh, a damage they can't defend again. Why don't you attack them first? Right. So there's a big strategy in how you do dungeon. Okay. So now here's where you can see why it's good to do dungeons together. At the bottom is the reward, one XP. We all get it in the room. I'm going to pop down. There okay. go. So by, do, by being both in the dungeon, we both get that reward. So he's gone. Let's move on. Now, one thing to remember, at the end of every room, you reset your stamina and magicka because you get a little rest. But you don't get to reset your health. Your okay. health only resets when you leave a dungeon. Now, we do have these... Um, healing potions and if you've got enough components you can use them and you get better better components um later in the game but for now you need two um plants to make a, a potion of minor healing which will heal one point okay so if you wanted to that previous combat you could have spent the stamina uh, to do and the then extra damage. It back at the end of the room so and, it didn't really if you had to spend three stamina or uh, yeah one two three it would have also reset again yeah but if i was down there and I needed to spend three, one, two, the third one would have come off my health, for example. Okay. So if you run out of a resource, stamina or magicka, you burn your health. Ooh, ooh, okay. Well, that's uh, nice though, gives you the option. Yeah. Okay, we move on to the next room. Ha! Oh, sorry. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a little skeever, little rat. Right. So this guy has got yellow. There you go yellow armor at three now i've gone already so i need to turn my character card kind of to the left yeah so i can't attack first i can't sneak him if you were on your own you could you could you could sneak in each room but we can't so okay. you have to attack him so you can't sneak because you don't happen to have the sneak skill uh okay. oh wait a minute no you do you do. You've got ragged robes, so you've got sneak one. Aha! So you can roll three plus one dice. You can roll four dice for sneak and see if you can. But he is also one circle, so should be good. Yeah, two. You got it. So what attack do you want to do? You right. can do two red because you don't have a dagger that doubles the attack, so you just do the normal attack. You can do two red. Or one yellow. If you do one yellow, it would just do one. It will just do one. If you do two red, it's mm. going to go straight through and reduce him to one point of damage. Uh, yeah, I'd lose a stamina. I'll lose a stamina either way, though. So yeah, I'll lose a stamina and we'll put him at one health. Right. So now it's my turn to fight, and I can do a normal attack. Uh, sorry, I got something wrong there. Okay. Every time you you start a fight. Oh no, you sneaked. It's okay. Yeah. You. you Sneaking. Now, this is a normal combat round. In a normal combat round, the monster attacks first. Do you want to roll the red dice and see what he does? Ah. 
fire. Flame. Okay, he missed. He needed the skull, sword, or axe. Ah, okay. Hit. Yep, that's what I thought it was going to be like. Okay, cool. Yeah, and now you're going to have to roll the attack as well, right? Yeah, so now I have to roll. So we only need to do one damage, and he only needs one uh, one of any kind of damage because he's on his final wound. So yeah. I could do a swing for free, but that needs a diamond that's basically a one in six. And so how I'm many gonna... dice can you roll? You roll three dice, always. Okay, okay always. Yeah. Right. You can roll more dice, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to spend a stamina to do a swing, which will do two damage, and I need a triangle. Why do you have to spend a stamina? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. You can see the yellow, uh, sorry, the green symbol here for stamina. Right. Next to you stab. You swing, didn't you? Or do you mean stab? Oh, sorry, I mean stab. Okay. I'm going to do stab because it's more likely to get the result. Yep. And uh, we just want to kill him now. So I'm going to roll the dice. Whoa. Uh, oh, that's really fail. So, that's fail. which is good. I want to show you how push works. Now, if you have a look at the character board, there's two little dice symbols here. See the little colored symbols? Yep, yep. Um, that means you can push twice. What, what that actually means is it costs you uh, one of your resources. In this case, I use, I'm using stamina. I'm going to spend the stamina to roll another dice. I can do this twice to try and get the results. Ah. So I'm rolling both dice. Oh, I did it. Success. Got the yeah, so that, yeah. I, if I failed, I could have done that one more, and that's it. And But once we get to level two, two and three, we you can get an push. extra one, and then at four, you get an extra, extra one, too. And then an extra push. Yeah, that's right. Nice. So I did it. We killed him. Dead Skeever. We got Skeever and Crab for uh, dinner. Right. See, again, we both get an XP, so we just scored another XP each. Huzzah. And that's, so this is how, look at how we do dungeons. So now these go into the discard pile. And then what we do to reset the dungeon deck is we take top card, oops, hold on, let's flip these. We take the top card um, from the deck, shuffle the discard, and put the lot all of them back on the top. Okay. So what that means is the deck is slowly cycling. So we know that there's probably two level zero creatures in there, um, but there's something else that was the third card down now mixed in. So it's pro possibly going to get harder. Right. So you can't keep mining the easy deck. And also, as you level up, you know, if we were level one, we would have just discarded those two level zero cards and the rest of the dungeon is is definitely harder copy so it's also a bad idea to do the same dungeon in different parts of skyrim at the same time if i do a cave and you do a cave you you take the first two cards i'm getting the next two ca cave which are cards which is probably <laughs> going to be dangerous or definitely. more dangerous yeah you don't want to do that so um right um we got a treasure for completing a dungeon we always get a treasure um just move these out of the way. I'm guessing we, we, we get the bronze. Yeah. No, not the whole deck, just one. Yeah. What do you got? All right, Ooh, looks like a dagger. steel dagger. Mm. Wow. I'm, gu I'm guessing really... we discuss amongst each other who gets it because we yeah, do it together. Yeah, sure. so What does that do? It does two. It's slightly better than That's yours. That's for you. That's for you. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's for you. This one uh, thanks you for your generosity. My man, you're going from iron to steel, you know? Now you got double daggers. Yeah, I can't... Well, now, here's the, here's the thing. Why would you have two? You can't, you, can't, you can't dual weld. If that was a different type of weapon, I could go, well, actually, I want to use this one because it's better against this enemy. But you'll notice I've just gained another sneak skill. I see. Okay. So you can only have a two-hander or a one-hander with maybe like a shield, but if you have two one-handers, it's likely that one of them will give you a benefit on top of the one you're going to use. Yeah, so imagine this one is a sword and does red damage. So against an enemy that, that has yellow armor, I'd use that against, and I'd use this one against an enemy that doesn't have yellow armor. So it gives you some tactical choices. Awesome. But in this case, I, there's no reason to have the iron dagger except that it gives me sneak. So now I've got a total of um, of uh, six sneak dice, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
three plus so, the three here. Yeah, so one, two, three plus the base three. And if I really want to, I can take a wound and roll another dice. <laughs> so I could roll seven. And if I learn the sneak skill, I could roll an eighth dice. So, yeah. um, and, but you'll see that that's, we're going to need it. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm sure they get a little more challenging as things go on. Oh, for sure, yeah. Right, so... Um, a that was card? Odd. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'll give you the first player token back to you. See what you get. Vampires Vampire. on the road! Let's see. Ahem. Ahem. Our time has come. Move one vampire token towards the nearest stronghold. If it reaches the stronghold, degrade it and remove the token. If there are no vampire tokens on the board, place one on a forest space? Question mark? Uh, yeah, wilderness space, yeah. All so, right. uh, this is a good example of a wandering monster card. So, first of all, uh, we if you look at the top uh, left of where the, where the tokens are, you can see you've got vampires, daedra, trolls, dragons, dunmer, cultists, and thamor, just a cars yeah. in the back. So if you grab a vampire token, yep. Now we want to put him on a wilderness space that's reasonably far away from a town, because if he moves into the town, he's going to degrade it, which means putting a threat token on, and that's bad. And maybe we also want to deal with him before he does that. Yeah, he's probably going to be pretty tough. Now, if you flip the token, you'll see there's a number on each side. So if you just kind of flip him a few times, and then. Like, you know, one of those is tougher than the other. <laughs> so, um, I'll let you pick a build in a space. So, basically, you want to be some, ideally somewhere at least a, one or two spaces away, not not adjacent uh, to it. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, down there. And, and also, you can't move over him without fighting him. So, you also don't want him kind of near one of your quests that you need to do. Yeah, this looks pretty, pretty safe away from everything. So we can go mm -hmm. over and just have a little bite over here. Yeah. All right. And okay. This guy just stays in the discard pile. Oh, now. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Bit of retroactive thing. We forgot uh -oh. to take threat for the... I wondered real where we weren't pulling threat. There was two threat from this, this event and two threat from this event. And we've got two threat from this event as well. Okay. So we've got six threat. Sorry, guys, if you're watching, that was um, schoolboy errors. E easy. Well, we'll just do an easy mode, that's all. <laughs> For my yeah. noobiness. Right, so let's bring this down. So we've got six threat we need to assign, which okay. would have been So two. end of round, uh, you start the round by switching the first player marker, uh, flipping over the event that deck, and then assigning threat, or assigning threat yeah. and then... The... Yeah, so that's... Yeah, always remember, uh, do the event card first, whatever that means, and then take the threat and figure out. Now, we always try and share it out between us. Then in that case, <laughs> we actually didn't forget. This is the next step we're supposed to be on. Uh, well, it is, yes, but we should have taken two threat for each oh, of those two. previously. Previous. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, probably we should have taken two to each of our main quests because we didn't have the side quests and then one we could take on each of our personal quests okay so this is going to be getting quicker then technically <laughs> we should have dumped a couple as well on oof not well, we, we could have put something on a town we could have put something on one of these quests here let's let's retro re retroactively throw a couple down then maybe one in no we total that was the we only needed to take six from this Across. one, but we, we missed out on two of them before, right? Uh, oh, from, from yeah, no, ones. you're... Oh, wait, sorry. This is not a card. From our taken. previous world quest, right? We should have two more from the first one. Uh, right? No, two for that one. Two, two for the Skyforge, two for a call to arms, and two for the vampire. So it's a total of six. So right. we've got our, our six, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, but pre the previous round, did we take any as well? That we forgot to do uh we we did because we we've done three rounds now so i was gonna throw uh, two more on retroactively <laughs> just uh no that's all that, we only have six there's only a six total okay okay from yeah yeah from the three events so that's okay we're not too bad oh, okay more don't come out every round then it's just when they hit it's whatever the event card tells you to put down got you so this isn't like a static 
amount of threat based on the world. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, it's not generating every turn. So oh, right. okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. Uh, yeah, I was like, dang, we we already are we're in it for a lot now. Okay, cool. You're okay because you could put at least one more on my little stallion, one more on rumors in. I could put at least I can take at least um, two, three more. Okay. So, but we, you know, we don't want to kind of leave things hanging. It's you know, it might be a good time to go and do a call to arms at least. Uh, okay. That one. Uh, I mean, I, you could, you could do that, for example. We're giving we... people a tutorial on what we can do, not necessarily how to win, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do a call to arms. Yeah, sure. All right. We're... And you got plant tokens. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that, yeah, you've got plant tokens, so you can yeah, yeah. do that. Where should I, so I need to go to... Yeah, so into white run white run right one two easy peasy and i uh, want to do this guy here so um yeah. i just simply i'm going to roll the dice right yeah three dice you need two circles and you couldn't push with plant components so why don't you try that now three dice plus one handed two handed and archery does that mean if that... you had any of those skills you would roll an extra dice got you so uh, okay one. So I've got my three dice, basically, to start with. Don't have any skills, and I need to get just two circles, and I can push with plant tokens, which hopefully I won't need to do. But knowing me, I will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh that Laura, that's, a, that's a crit. That's a crit. That is. They're pretty impressed. <laughs> nice, nice. You got your job. So you can upgrade an item now. So if look, you can upgrade uh, the sword or shield. Both of them... <laughs> Yeah, this so one. what we're going to do, I'm going to, if you look at the little upgrade deck up here, so if you draw one of those cards, okay, yeah. and bring it down to your weapon. So this is really easy. You, um, hold on, let's move that out of the way. So the way upgrades work is they just sit slightly off. So can you see... This is now doing an extra two red Whenever damage. Whenever I slash. Whenever you slash, yeah. Ooh. Now, the other way it could work is um, just move this around. If you had upgraded your shield, it would do now protect you against another red damage. Ooh. And the other way it can work is if you had... Uh, enchanted it, you would have gained the top power. And you get stamina that... whenever you receive any red damage. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, more damage. Yeah, so you can't. Yeah, it it said it, it said upgrade, which means um, using the kind of ore effect. So that is more damage for you, which is pretty cool. Nice. So I think oh, you, actually no. you can. Play, uh, is there a little snappy? Yeah. There we go. It's, it's, yeah, it's got a snap on, but you can. Can you, can you only see. upgrade each weapon once, or whatever? Yes. Okay. You can enchant it as well. You can upgrade and enchant. Some things might say you may upgrade it twice, like the um, the um, robes can be enchanted a couple of times. Okay. Certain wearables can be enchanted. You can get rings that you can enchant. So there's all sorts of ways to add all loads and loads of power. And this is going to go Ooh. now, right? It is, but look, shuffle, shuffle one, one, four, three. three. I'll go get that. Let's see what that does. One, four, three. The so one, four, three. Put it down here. Might makes right. Prepare for the coming war. See, once per game turn in white run, turn in two B treasures to tr draw one A treasure. Ooh. Pretty neat. So we're going to... Shuffle that with the. I'm guessing that's a really good event in comparison to some other ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And it it flat. This is how the event deck grows because events start coming in that might be good or bad. From this big right. stack here. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so you did that event. You've. Yep. You've cleared it. Uh, the other thing to remember is when you complete a quest, the threat on the quest goes away. 
So, and then of course you get another quest, which means you can absorb more threat. Right. So, um, right, what am I going to do? I'm, uh, we were at this cave. So I think I'm going to risk going and doing this, my quest. Yeah, the main one? Yeah. That Clear three, five. soak up a little bit of threat, move on a little bit too. Yeah. So let's do that. Drawing three, five, five. You gonna come with me to White Run? I'm uh no, I've gone to I've gone to do this um this enemy here as part of my quest. This oh, tomb in clear five five just mean three five five just means you draw it and fight it. Yeah. So it's like a it's it, it, it's not a dungeon because it doesn't have the usual rewards. But um, it's I'm going to get the quest rewards. So look, this is uh, let's put him up on the track because it just makes it easier. So he's got this is going to be tough. He's got two armors. Okay, so he's got well, like basically three red health and one yellow. Yeah, and he sneaked two. Oh, and he ambushes. So if I fail to sneak, he's going to attack me, and then he attacks me again. <laughs> Oof. So, well, you got a lot of sneaks, so I have faith in you. Yeah. So, okay. I should reset my thing. So, I have got one, two, three. So, a total of six um, sneak. And I'm you not going to. You still need to just roll the same amount, correct? Two? These two circles, yeah. You so... got this. <laughs> you... you said. You I, do not have this. Oh, man. Well, I need a new now, instructor here. Come on. I failed. So he ambushes me. You He's could push to... if you wanted to, right? No, I can't. You oh. can't push. With, uh... See, and I had the option. I could have taken a wound, but I knew this is going to be a tough fight. So he's ambushing me. Let's see what he gets. Do you want to roll the red dice? Sure. This is not going to be painful at all. Oh, he missed. Yes. Uh, and again, yeah, right? he missed. So now he's doing his normal attack. Oh, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I mean, after that <laughs> failed sneak, you deserved it. All right. Now, there's a bit of strategy here, right? If I hit him, uh, if I can clear the yellow damage, it only needs one point of damage. He can't defend against yellow damage. Sorry, if I can clear the yellow armor, he can't defend against yellow. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if you did attack the red with yellow, he could still defend with his yellow. Yeah, it still absorbs it. So, so that needs to go first. Yeah, so I'm going to do... Yellow. Yeah, I'm going to do the stab attack, which is going to cost one stamina from the steel dagger. And it's... I need one triangle, and it's going to do three yellow. Uh, I'm doing that instead of the free one, because it's uh, easier to get that result. I really want to get rid of his right. yellow health. So... Three dice. You got it. And I think on trying. That's, yes. uh, that's it. That's all three. Uh, so we get rid of the yellow. Now it's back to his turn. So roll the dice for him. Fire. Flame. Dill miss. Awesome. Right. Now it's. I've got a chance. I can do three yellow damage with the stab again. Costs me a stamina, and that yeah. could kill him. So. That'll oh, do. Did it. So, now I would. Uh, I get my stamina back at the end of the um, encounter. And now there's no treasure for him. He just goes away. You get the completed quest. Yeah, so now I complete the quest. Let's see. And that's this uh, threat goes away. Okay, and after you what? clear this, do you get a new main quest? Yeah, that's right. So let's see. I find Hessler, a member of the Companions outside the tomb, shaking in fear. I can't. It's too much. She points at the entrance, nearly crying. She confesses she is terrified of confined spaces. Her shame is only made worse by the lone Draugr mocking her from inside the tomb. What a whelp. So you don't need to, uh, on the front here, you don't need to be oh. in White Run to do this? Uh, it's Look, if you see, it was in a tomb in White Run, which is where I went oh, to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, um, now, 
you can see now I gain one B treasure and two XP. If I'd failed though, you can see I escaped the tomb out of breath and covered in scratches. Did it, did you kill it? She asked. I nod, knowing that she'll never find out the truth. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So the story continues, and then you make your next choice. So whatever, even if I'd failed that combat, I still keep going. You just don't get any benefits. But luckily you get yeah. one of the B treasures, which means if you get another yeah. one before the next event comes up that you need two B treasures to trade in for an A, you can then utilize those uh, to get a better treasure. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So I get two more XP, and I'm one short Six, of Six, one level. more. Yeah. And we're going to draw a, uh, a B treasure. Let's see what we get. Gonna shuffle. Lock picking. Ooh, lock. Gain two dice when facing uh, lock picking tests. Worth two. I could sell it, and I can up, I can enchant it with three soul gems. And does it stay with you? Yeah, it does. So I'm gonna put that in my see in the. So it's not even a one shot. This is forever. Yeah, that counts as a wearable. So any time I face traps, I can now, which is totally on brand for the Khajiit, right? Yep. You got your daggers, you got your lock picking tools, you're all set. So, um, and then let's, I need to make a choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hesler was mugged by Moiva and her Khajiit associates in the past. She was recently seen, she's recently seen the Khajiit caravan close to Falkreath. So shall I talk to the Khajiit and try to get information on Moiva Kanai, or... Will I ambush the Khajiit and force them to talk about the Moira Kanai? Oh, I mean, I, Khaj I think ambushing is probably a safer bet. Yeah, but I am a Khajiit, right? Maybe I should just talk to them. Mm. But then I'm a sneaky Khajiit. Of course I'm going to ambush them. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. They might have treasure that they'll give you. Yeah, true. So, one, seven, eight. I'm going to move this down. Like, we've got this little kind of tail growing here of my story. Gonna go get one card one seven eight. There we go, let's bring it over. And a bit of housekeeping. The Khajiit are quietly spending the night on the outskirts of Fogbreath. Look, this says I should be level one before I go there. And it's basically my quest is in Fogreath, so I'm gonna move the quest marker down to the Fogreath. And that's the end of the turn. I'm done. Alright, well, here you go, first player. And an event. Conspiracy. There are forces working against you. Place a threat token on each quest and then discard this card. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so we got to put a threat, oh, a threat on the world quest. And I need two as well. All right, I'm going to try and complete my quest on the next turn, I think. We're in trouble. Yeah, where do you need to go to? Morthal. Can I even get there? One, two, yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. Sadly, I still don't have what I need as far as the pushing goes, mm -hmm. but... It's okay, but you got a you, decent chance, two circles. Do you want to do that, then? Yeah, I'll do that. But it's your turn first. Uh, oh, yes. And we did clear one of these quest markers. So there's the one quest left. Um, I mean, I could try the Skyforge. Or I can get a Risk It Fails. I'm going to... Oh, uh, no, but if I fail, then it is definitely bad. <laughs> so, hmm, tricky one. So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come to Whiterun and do a town quest and get some more. Do you want to go and do your... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, because I'm going first, right. So, Fulgentius, tired traveller. I just arrived. Can you please help me with the luggage? I could really use some assistance. Okay. Now, I can't push this, uh, so I'm definitely going to take ore to use in that world quest. So, this is, an, this, is a, this is a skill test where we roll all the dice for our stats. In this case, it's stamina, and I need to get two triangles. So, I have got a total of five. 
stamina. Okay, so we're rolling five dice. And what do I need? Oh, not Two. Bad. Two triangles. You got this. Come on. You oh, got it. lucky. You got it. Uh, okay, and I gain two XP, which is now you can't ever gain more XP than what you need to level up because you you immediately level up at the end of the turn. And I'm going to take his quest. So Fulgentius is going away for good, and I get quest card one, two, six. Thank you. So I've now got another quest that can absorb threat, and I need to go to a wilderness space in the Reach to look for his manservant who's gone missing. Is it wilderness space? Yeah, wilderness. Oh, no, I put it in the wrong one. Uh, the Reach, yeah, here. But my quests are properly spread out. And... Um, oh yeah, so that's uh, him done, and now I have the at least one ore, at least, uh, to have a go at that world quest. So what about you? You want to go to your... Yeah. And then I'm just straight up going to roll three dice and hope I get two circles. Yeah. Come on. That's th oh. That's enough. That'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. So turn over the cards. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. We got, we got so, it. ooh, Morris the Mountain gives you his sword. I'll get you S twenty and gain two XP. I'll take the two. I'll take the two XP. Ooh, what's that? Oh, that's right. That twenty. Morash's sword. Oh, this is awesome. This is right up your street. Sadly, my upgrade is stuck on my iron sword, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still better. Yep. Now, if you sell the sword, you, you don't get any benefit for the upgrade. You uh, still okay. get the job. But it's def now, here, look at it, though. It's more expensive in stamina to use it. So it might be that you hang on to this for a little bit until the denizens get harder. And you could, and you can't sell it because it's a, it's a named unique item. weapon. Yeah, I can put it in my bag. Yeah, though. yeah, you, you've still got it. It's gonna, be, it's definitely gonna be useful. All right, now I and gotta also do an option here. <clears throat> Morash, the mountain nose of Khajiit, who goes by the name of Moyev Karnai. He met her at the new Guinness uh, Corner Club in w Windhelm. He said she used to receive lots of packages from a friend in Elden Root. Hmm. I'll infiltrate the new Guinness Corner Club, pretending to be a skooma addict. <laughs> I'll create a distraction. Let's go with, uh, I'm going to be an addict. 176. Okay. All right. So I type in 176. Yeah. Boop. All right, I'm an undercover addict. <laughs> now this threat is you need going go, on. You need to go to Windhelm, which is in the east. All right, take this and, and put you here. I'm starting to get this. Starting cool. to get it all. All right. Uh, right. Oh, you can still do your white run. Uh, but you've got no money yet. You want to get some money. Need to draw another event card. Oh, another yeah. world card. Oh, they're coming out. Treasure hunter. Oh. Riches beyond belief are <laughs> hidden in ancient chambers. Can you get them without waking the undead menace? So uh, it's a a tomb in the pale, which is here. That's tempting. Do you fancy we could we kill three Draugr? We'd each get an A treasure. Yeah, let's do it. But if we fail, we're going to have two vampire tokens. <laughs> I don't think we'll fail. Oh, and this yeah. wandering vampire, when is he supposed to be moving? So only if an event comes up that says he moves. Oh, okay. So you don't have to. Okay. They're, they're gradually going to build up and be a threat. Gotcha. Okay, but we do have to take two threats, remember? Let's yes. get that. 
So let's oh. bring this down now. Yeah, if you want to take one. Oh, sorry. Oh no. Here we go. Came a rubber band. I'll put one on my one of my other threats. Yeah, let's go here. Let's fight. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Right. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Um, back. So, clear three undead. Let's do this. Okay, so. One, two, and then the next one. Oh, no, no, three, yeah. So, because we're drawing one at a time, you know that the third one's probably going to be tough. Right, flamethrower trap. This has an armor of one red. I've got we've got one chance to lock pick it. Lock picking two. Just like sneak, remember I've got the uh two dice yep. when fate lock pick. So you now we can decide who goes first too, right? Yeah. Yeah, you so should go first I, on this guy. Yeah, so again, you roll three dice, plus I gain two. Uh so I'm gonna be rolling five dice to get two circles. We don't want this to burn us. No. Oh, did it so the reward for that is because i lock picked it money. i get money 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 and flip side of money is five so i just need to take three more ones oh i uh forgot to level up let's just um just pause for a moment and do that because you have to level up at the end of the turn it's three four five six Seven. Yep. So leveling up lets me pick a skill, and um, I'd also increase one of my attributes. So I've got a couple of choices. If I learn one-handed, I'm going to be rolling an extra dice when I roll to attack. That means I'll roll four dice, not three. Hmm. Equally so, if I learn sneak, that's going to give me an extra sneak, and then... I gain a sneak because the Khajiit gains a sneak if he learns sneak. It like literally becomes a sneak meister. So that would mean I am um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I would be insanely good at sneaking. But I'm pretty good already and I'm tempted to, at some point you've just got to use your normal weapons. So I think I'm going to get one handed. Okay. And you can choose from any of these choices up here. Yeah. I could have gone with lockpicking, pickpocketing. Could have learned a spell if I wanted to. So. Yeah. And each of those has two sides. So once you've filled your skill block, you can start turning them over to be legendary. So I'd gain two dice. Nice. With one handed. And you'd have to, okay. after you finish this one, how do you turn them over? Do you have to spend seven and then eight and then nine? Yes. Yeah. So uh, once you, you've got to 14, that then turning one over, the next one over to legendary costs 15, then 16. Oh, okay. Oof. Oof. Yeah. But you're going to be getting a lot of XP later on. So then I can also increase uh, one of my stats. I think I'm, hmm, I think I'll increase my health because I've got the ability to take damage to gain, increase my sneak if I need it. Right, that's done. Let's go back to the dungeon where okay. I had just sneaked, uh, sorry, I just uh, picked the flamethrower trap. So this one says level, so are you at level zero now? Uh, no, it's, we actually use the, these level caps. That's oh, actually the- Oh, okay, this is our, this is your level, I yeah. see. And this is, you moved it to so, level one. This is quite important that we did it just before we finished the dungeon because I'm level one going into the dungeon and that means these any level zero items are going to get discarded. Removed. Yeah, they won't come back. Yeah. Now I've mo I've acted. So it's my turn uh, now. Yeah, I can't do anything. So, whoa, look at this. He's a uh, uh, vampire fledgling. He's, I can't, we can't, oh no, you can sneak I him. I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need if three. You fail, I need... If you fail, he he gets a free attack on you, uh, which is the skull. Ooh, um, if I choose not to sneak, then he does a normal attack, which means there's a chance he, 
he's only he's only got a uh, one in two chance of hitting you because he only hits on three of those symbols. Um, let's uh, let's have him just normally hit me. This is three three yeah. circles, pretty challenging. So yeah, yeah. that's right. A skull. skull. He still did it right now. Drain. If you see Drain, heals one um, uh, pink armor. Um, now he's not damaged, so he doesn't heal. So that's not too bad. But as you can see, we need to finish him quickly. But he's going to do. You can see there's two damages here. One red. Uh, so it's actually purple. Now you do whichever damage is worse for you. Now let's look at your character card. You've got a shield that protect gives you one red armor, and you've got ragged robes that gives you one yellow. You you don't have any purple armor, magic armor, so he's going to do one purple damage to you. And either way, if you just do one. Yeah. Now, if he did cover it, if he'd done one red to you, you wouldn't have lost health, but you would have taken a hit of of stamina. But the okay. same thing. If if you had if you had say three red armor and he had taken say two red damage you still would have only taken one stamina okay. so armor saves you from lots of damage but always costs you one stamina as a result because you're being winded by the attack right okay now i get to roll um you do. one of my attacks and i want to do yep. so he's now this got... is interesting. he's got purple so if you do your red attack he can't defend against it you're going to do four damage which is pretty cool yeah, that was what I was going for. So I wanted to do is spend one stamina. And just out of interest, you know you've got Morash's sword. Now you um now you can see he's bad. You could go, I'm gonna spend a stamina to switch my equipment, and you could switch Morash's sword in. But you can see that it's two it stamina to, to attack with it though. Yeah, it's quite costly and you mm. need two circles, which yeah. is Yeah. Just slightly harder. I think you, you're better off with the, the four damage and one triangle. Yep. Yep. All right. There will be there will come a time when it makes sense. <laughs> That'll do it. That will do it, yeah. So you just did four red. He's on one wound. All right. Give me one second. Oh, no, you killed him. Yeah, I killed him. He's dead. All right, was fine. All right, he's dead. Right, so... Uh, everyone gets one XP, and then you can choose a soul gem or a B treasure. The B treasure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you want to pick a B treasure? And I'll grab a Oops, soul gem. Yeah. What did you get? I got an iron war axe. Oh, nice. So I, this is actually an equipment, so I can either equip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could... Uh... I mean, it's okay. You could, uh, your... I'm liking my iron sword still. I think. Yeah, your current thing does is better. You could just sell it. Can I sell it right now or later? Later, right? Uh, no, when you get to um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. back to battling. Yeah, okay. So the Draugr. Now, you would go first because I was the last person to attack. So okay. you can try to sneak him. Mm, um, I mean, it is too... Got a chance... And he hits me with red and yellow, and I do have defense for both of those. Yeah. Let's go ahead and sneak him. Let's try it. It's not too bad. Come on. No. Oh. Mm, that's a critical failure. Okay, so he's going to attack me twice. Uh, well, he does. First of all, he does the skull attack because Ooh. you failed. So that's three red because I have one defense in red. You would take two damage. But you don't. It doesn't affect your stamina. Only if you absorb all the damage. Oh, so you lose two. okay. Owie. Yeah. Now, Ooh. just so you can see, there's a little symbol here on your health track. This is what's called your final final wound. Um, this what what it means is you can't ever. If you were to go here, you're dead. But you're not dead. You can only ever stop there, and then you've got one final chance. Um, to go, you know what, I'm going to leave the dungeon and you're, you're fine. Or you keep fighting and risk it, but then it's on you. Okay. Um, and it also gives you a chance to heal up, and then again you can stop there. Gotcha. Uh, That's a good place to stop then. It's just before it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I took, now, I took two, also, I took oh, yes, that's right. 
any time you can burn your use your two components to heal a wound as well. So if you get to your final wound, you can heal once and then back. Yeah, so you're gonna basically like it's basically protects you from death once, and then if I do that, yeah. Really sometimes you can find a monster if it does like six damage, and it it sucks to just die because you um you got a lucky strike. So it gives you that chance. Yeah. Now you could just at the end of the your action like when you've gone you could be like no i i don't want to risk it i'm going to leave the dungeon you lose any the reward for finishing the dungeon and for killing him but you um you don't uh die but dying's not that bad if you did die then you're out of the dungeon and you respawn at the end of the turn i'd have to finish and the worst all that happens you don't lose any of your gear you're still fine and um you basically draw a threat for every player in the game. So we'd have to take two threats and you draw an event card. Okay. So it's not great, <laughs> but it's not, it's not annoying. You don't lose the thing you just found. Oh, I just got this really cool piece of armor. See what I mean? Yes. Okay, let's do this last one. You so you... Me again. Here we go. Nothing. Oh, no, no he doesn't actually. Um, you just failed the sneak, so his first turn he gets to attack you. If uh, it was when the other uh, the um, the oh, other he had enemy ambush, had ambush, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. So it, it just, what it just meant by failing the sneak, he de he hundred percent attacked you and got an attack in. Okay, he didn't okay. have to. Well, he'd have missed anyway. Okay, now, do I now... get to attack or no? Uh, no, because you tried to. You okay, tried I tried to the sneak. sneak. Got you. So now it's oh, just your you turn. You have to spend the stamina. Um, for the attack for because you still tried to attack but you just failed gotcha so you spend one stamina so i'm he's got three i want to do my three yellow because that will kill him slash him i'm going to do the stab and let's see if i can get the triangle oh did it yeah he's gone so i get one ore for doing that and then we both get an XP. You must have leveled up by now. I am at, no, that'll be putting me at six. One more. Really? Oh, okay. All right. So. Um, These guys are all gone forever. Yeah, now, this isn't a dungeon. Oh, yeah, so we're going to put it in the box. So we know that the Draugr dungeons are going to get really tough. But look, um, what did we do? Treasure Hunter. Yep. Each player in quest gains one a treasure. Ooh. And then it's discarded. How do I get an ebony sword? Wow, you're really tooling up. <laughs> yeah, I want that. I want that for sure. Oh, Elven Dagger. That is definitely my thing. We really lucked out there. So I'm going to switch out the Elven Dagger. This also gives me Sneak 1, but it's a much better attack. But more, but it's more costly. So I might equally go, yeah, I'll sell that. It's, you know, I don't really need it, but let's see. I think my... Uh... Sword is just, gen in general, better than the previous one. My iron sword. A sword. Just gotta yeah, put this uh, right. a, this little uh, upgrade on it real quick. <laughs> yes, definitely. You got more choice with that. So you probably want to, when you level up, if you increase your stamina, that will help you absorb the extra stamina. Because cost. it costs so much, yeah. And that, and then learn one-handed, and that means you're rolling four dice. So. Make it a little That's easier. That's going to be mitigating the luck there a lot because more dice and less less stamina cost. And if I wanted to, when drawing that treasure, I could have took a damage, not at this oh, point, yes. but you to draw an extra should. card and do, choose do that between. now. I should? Now, yes. Now, um, you've still got a point of damage left. You'd go down. If if you were on your final damage, you couldn't do it because you would kill yourself. Doing right. It by extra wound. And your health resets at the end of the dungeon. So yeah, do another, draw another A card, treasure card now. Okay. Let's see what I get. Now, do I get to keep this as well, or do I choose between the two? 
Choose between the two. Now, Blizzard Destruction Spell. Oof. Now, you could just go, you know what? I want to become a magic user. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to learn the Destruction Spell when I level up. Look at that. Mad, mad amounts of damage. Five purple or six yellow. Tempting, right? But it, look at how much it costs you. Six Magicka to cast that spell. Yeah. Or three. It's a, and it's a 14. Yeah, it's worth 14, though. So the alternative is... So keep your this is friends. three gold and it makes me go magic or i can get this one this one's um it's three less but it kind of just or you could take the me. wizard and just sell it for the money so you've got some interesting choices there hmm. i don't know what would you do uh i think i'd keep the ebony sword it's more that's kind of what i was <laughs> thinking as well let's yeah. go where does this go back into the abyss? Um, it just goes back to the treasure deck. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorta. Of. Okay. Okay. All right. And we both took that, so next. Yeah, one. that was the end of the turn. So first player marker moves. Um, our. Health sets. resets. Yeah, everything resets. And then uh, I'll draw the... I got one. Oh, you did? Okay, right. And this one, Horse Thief. Oh, Horse Thief. So, we need to take two threats in Windhelm, gain a horse, and then take, take card S51 and discard this card. So in Windhelm, I'll put it over there. that's an active event so it goes in the middle here as long as that's active you can do that you can gain a horse but <laughs> you're a horse thief right so there's going to be a, a, a downside to it but we need to take two threat i got one i put it i put them on already okay yeah i'll take I, one I, I already put one on both for you and for me oh, okay. i put one on okay. your active main event and my main event all right our main see. quest Actually, I'll probably put it on the uh, uh, the minor quest. Okay. Just to uh, spread the risk a bit more. Okay. So, um, what do you want to do? It's your turn now. I think. Might head down to Falkreath. Um Got winter hold to do. Hmm. I think I'll. Um, I'm going to head down to Falkreath. And uh, one, two, three. Oh, I can get there. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go do the next part of my quest. So you can move as well at the same time, and then we take uh, we take turns doing our kind of the actions. Now, can we trade as well in this game? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. So if there was something you want, you know, we, I might go. Oh, look, I'll give you this piece of armor I found because I don't need it, or vice versa. One, two, three, four. So, if you want to, you could gain a horse or do your quest. I can only choose one or the other, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, not doing the horse. Let's go with the quest. Yeah. Which is just yeah, roll yeah. three dice, and I don't have lock picking, sadly. But if I did trade with you at, a, at the previous turn, I could have probably... Oh, got... I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you do that? Why don't you... Um, we'll, we'll say that... Uh... Well, after after the dungeon we traded, or you can just give yeah, me yeah. it. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. Because that'll give me an extra die, right? Yeah, and um, we're getting two actually, right? Well, this is when facing oh. traps. Oh, okay, so ju it's just I just have actually that. Oh, no, I, so I don't I have lock picking. Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna yeah, help me. Sorry, it wouldn't have helped you. Yeah. Do you have lock picking <clears throat> though, or no? You don't. No, but it it allows you to do lock picking. Right. Right. 
Um, okay, so I don't have the skill lock picking, so I'm just going to do roll the three dice, hope yeah. for a triangle, and... I got yeah. it. That'll do it. Great. Yeah. So, what'd you get? Success. I slip into the room and close the door behind me. I gain two experience, one A treasure, and I place a marker next to solitude. Yeah. So we place a grey marker next to solitude up here. I'll grab your XP for you. That'll let me level up. It does, yeah. And I can also go ahead and lose a life to pick between two A treasures if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Whoa, ebony armor, ebony shield. <laughs> Look at that. Huh. You probably wow. Ebony armor will mean you'll have five red, one yellow. Um because it all adds up with your shield. If you took the ebony shield, you'd have two red and three yellow. Tricky one. I lose my sneak if I lose my robes. But yeah. I really shouldn't sneak anyway. I don't no, have that's enough true. of it. And I don't really care about protecting your damage because I'm not really very tanky. <laughs> there you go. Right. So you can put that back in the treasure deck. Right. Some fireworks going crazy here. Okay. okay. And uh, draw. 180. You draw card one oh, I didn't eight. read my. I didn't read it. The room is in disarray. Moiva Karnai yeah. has documents, pieces of armor, and weapons scattered all over the place. I shuffle through them until I find a compromising letter, which is here at 180. All right. Uh, Elden Root evidence card. M Moiva recently started working for a new contractor, somebody from Elden Root who is paying her very generously for her services do not flip this card until instructed by the player who draws 183. okay one eighty three uh, hmm. yes i'm just remembering because i think actually when there's two players we might have to discard a card well we'll see when we get to the end okay right um I've gone to Falkreath. I need to clear three, seven, eight. I've got a fight on my hands. Oh, you need to level up as well. Yes, yes. I'll do that while you do that. Uh... Well, let's just uh, check on. So what's your option? So you've got your enough XP. Yes. And so, for example, your option is if you game one-handed that's going to help you with your skill yeah, test but that's already what i'm grabbing your, your ability is an imperial if you learn block then and you have a shield equipped then you gain an extra one red armor one red armor i'd say that um attack is probably <laughs> best part of defense a good offense and then what do you want to do increase your stamina or your yeah you could increase your health does you the scope more. as well when i do that uh you pick one to go up so that, that, they all start here. So, for example, you could increase your health to take more wounds, but you could increase your stamina to help pay. See, this ebony sword costs you two stamina every time you're going to use it. Ah, uh, okay. So that, yes, that stays there. Now, I paid one health, though, to take two A weapon, A, A treasures. Uh, yeah, but it resets at the end of the turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right, then. Okay. Yep. Let's set this all over here. Right, so I'm going to do the Khajiit Guard. Sneak five. <laughs> you need five white? Yeah. Oof. This is going to be tough. Right. I'm going all out sneak. So I'm going to take a wound to gain sneak. And I've got one, two, three, plus three, normal dice, plus one for taking the wound, which gives me an extra sneak. I've got seven dice. 
and you need five white or five circles yeah mm. oh no you know what i don't i think it's too tough to do that i'm gonna because i don't want to risk getting a guaranteed hit and i've taken some damage so not gonna sneak him i'm just gonna risk him doing a normal attack so do you want to roll for him it's fire three red or three yellow you're taking three red it's going to do three red which uh it's going to go straight through one two three okay now what's my attack i'm he's got two red i can't do red i'll do any other i've got to do yellow to him first I have to do the four. Four minus three. Oh god, no. Um, this is actually quite tough. So I'm going to do a normal stab, which is going to do three damage, which will basically only do one damage because yeah. he's got armor, and it costs me one stamina. Can can you? You have to do at least enough to hit that armor, though, huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, nope. I'm going to push. One in three. Yes. Got it. Okay. One damage. Oops. Oh, it's only one damage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, he's, he rolls. So do you want to roll for him? Yep. Oh, uh, three more. You go to your last life. I go to my last life. And I can use the potion at any time. So yep. let's... Um, I'm going to make my attack and see what happens. So I'm going to um, do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to need to get triangle. Yeah. Okay. Do another damage. He's on his uh, last wound for yellow. And he attacks me again. Ah, oh, wait, sorry. I'm... I'm going to stay in and spend two plant components to heal a wound. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> An axe. Okay, he misses me. Thank goodness. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Spending a stamina. Uh, doing my stab. Trying to get three uh, damage. Doesn't matter what yellow damage do I do now. I'm... I'm only going to do one. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Wait, I'm why, gonna push. why don't you just... Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Keep it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to push. Oops, it's this dice I'm rolling. No, yeah. that failed. Um, and I'm not going to attack again. So now it's back to him to attack. Oh, uh, put you at your last health. I'm back to my final wound again. Hmm... I can just normally fail it, but let's so let's try. I'll I'll keep going. You know, I'm going, I might get lucky. So I'm doing a normal attack again. Costing a laugh for my stamina. Uh, the count is here. so now it's his uh, his turn. Fatal axe. He missed. Nice. <laughs> Okay, right. This is it. This is really it. This is my last chance. I can't. You just um, gotta swing at him. Yeah, I need to get that. Um, and I can't push because I'm down to my last wound. So you're, you need a <laughs> diamond, right? It's all on this roll. You yes. It. You got it. He's dead. Right. What happens? Most of them are asleep. Oh, okay, the Kaji are quietly spending the night on the outskirts of Falkreath. Most of them are asleep, and only one keeps guard. Uh, prepare my weapons and jump from the shadows. Um, wow. The guard dies screaming. His friends, terrified, pay me to spare their lives. Gain seven gold and two XP and place a um, uh, token next to Solitude. And um, read... One eighty. But I already have 
180, correct? Uh, so yeah. you're nope. going to get 181. Yeah, actually, it should be 183, okay. which is... Um, we should have we should have taken one out because the, the of, two um, player edition or the yeah that's module. right. So Marvel and I is definitely working for Thamel. The organization organization has no right to operate in Skyrim. The High King knows needs to know about this urgently. Gather all players in solitude, and then flip all the evidence cards. Um, so what I would say is maybe we should end there because uh, we don't want to go to solitude and show everyone what is the end of the game. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay no problem. Uh, that basically is um, your first forays into Skyrim, the adventure game. And that, what we just played was uh, most of, what, like, chapter one? Yeah, like, uh, we basically would then go to Solitude and turn our cards over and we would see what the final story is. And there's a total final of part. six of these in the campaign itself. Yeah, and this is a short version. So um, there's only, I think we've gone through, yeah, this is with the third um, main quest card that we each had. Usually there's more of those, might be four or more. And the game, this one typically should last an hour. I think we've been playing for, when, when did we start? Oh, Eight. I'm going to guess we've been filming for about two hours. About maybe two, a less. two hours. So as you can see, two of us are playing for, good couple of hours and we 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 weren't pushing for our main quest we were going off we did we did that kind of big quest together we did some like other side quests yeah so we were able to go off and do other stuff and we still have time now like we could literally go to a, do another dungeon do some more side quests on our way to solitude there's no rush because we've still got time to absorb some threat and when we finish this everything that we have we keep and move on to the next part yes uh, i believe the next one so it, it does vary a bit so the next one you you basically you got a little box a chapter save box you put all your equipment cards in there all your counters all your um uh skill tokens so you know for example when you start again if you've got one skill token you can bump up one of your stats by one level so you can when you start again you can go actually i would have preferred to have an extra point of health or instead, or an extra point of magicka, right? And you keep all your cards. So basically, start again. One of the later campaigns jumps a bit forward in time. You're going to end up more in the um, fourth era, like with the whilst the dragonborns in um, Barim. So you're going to um, kind of see the dragonborn from a distance doing stuff, and there's various events happening, and you're off doing your thing, um, having an impact as well. And at that point, then there's a bit of a reset. I think you play a descendant and you get like one of the coolest things that your character had, like a cool weapon or some magic ice or something. My question is, do you fight a dragon at some point? Of course you do. Uh -huh. There are roaming dragons in this that come out uh, because of course they appear in the fourth era. So there are roaming dragons. And then the From the Ashes expansion box introduces a series of encounters with a really giant dragon that will take over a whole hold and be destroying it, and you, you've got a really big battle on your hands. Nice. Yeah, this game was a lot of fun. Uh, the time, like, drifted by real, or, like, real quick. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was bored at any point in, in time, and it was always yeah. an option of multiple different choices, uh, world quests, my own personal quests, uh, working with you on a quest. That's, that was actually really yeah. cool. And, of course, the combat area is uh, very unique, uh, and I like how straightforward and easy the game is. This game is really easy to pick up and, and to teach somebody. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the interesting thing is kind of like after like two, maybe three turns, you've you've shown people how to do most things. It's, it's very straightforward, you know, encounters, upgrading, um, you know, doing dungeons, event cards. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to teach people. And I, I hope it's the sort of game that, my my goal is this is the game that y you fancy that kind of adventuring, leveling up, fun experience, and you just want to come back again and oh, you know what? Really fancy being the Nord and just going hardcore, two handed weapons and heavy armor. Oh, actually, I uh, really fancy being the the Altmer and just going full on like spell casting, and just sit and then also different choices. Like I wonder what would happen if I'd had the other starting card and made these choices. So there's like all sorts of ways to climb to that solitude ending in this one on your own storyline. And then 
that our the, the side quests that we get will take us in different directions. The treasures we get, you know, you, you could have gone, oh, you know what, I'm going to go with that big crazy spell <laughs> and just become a, a spellcaster. Why not? Yeah, that was it, the the choice yeah. is, is is more than enough. Um, I was almost nervous that it would be too much to the point where I can't like, oh, I've got 15 different weapons to choose from and I don't know which one to pick where it's like, oh, I had a lot of weapons, but I knew which ones I wanted, you know? And that was yes. really nice as well. I like the bag space is nice. The fact that I can hold these things and utilize them later or sell them. Uh, the characters yeah. feel different. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoyed this game. I like the number deck too. That's a nice twist. It adds a little bit of like role play and uh, choose your own adventure type thing. And you can do some fun stuff like when you draw 180, you can go 181, 182. And then eventually as everybody gathers those final quests... It makes the game make sure that everybody is on the same page with the story, allowing everyone to work together cooperatively to see what happens at the end. That was really cool. So, Great. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. My one question I've got a critique potentially. I don't know. It's a, maybe yeah. I'm just foibling here, but uh, for this like treasure hunter card, right? It says, yeah. What does that say in the middle there? How is the symbols described? So, that is the quest symbol. Right. Quest symbol A. A, and then that's the location. So that's a, um, a a tomb in the pale, which is the area. So you, you would then grab a quest token. Right, place it in that area in the tomb, pale. Uh, which is, oh yeah, we had one there. So this is, that's where we went. So that's where you know where you've got to go. Yeah, I don't know why, for some reason I keep wanting to think that the A should be an in, but I know why that's not done. Like quest symbol in this location in the pale. Sure, yeah. I don't know why it, like, twisted me up. So yeah. I looked at it, I'm like... It's a good point. It's a good point about the way I think. But otherwise, very st simple, very straightforward. Still a lot of choice, and it, it felt like Skyrim. It was, it was nice to, to revisit the world once again. Uh, I don't know if I'll have enough time to play the video game again, but as far as the board <laughs> game goes, this is one I would yeah. I would easily want to take a look at um, and, and, and pick up. I, my, I don't know about my wife playing this one, might be a little bit too much for her, but but for me, I, I, I dig it. I really enjoy it. I mean, I'll force her to play it anyway. Uh, the campaign <laughs> looks really solid. You guys just started it, and it's already booming up. And there's looks like a lot of stretch goals as well uh, that you've already you've already unlocked a couple. I see. Yeah, the the big one is um, on the. We're doing a big stream tomorrow with uh, Board Game Revolution and, and some other reviewers, and we're announcing uh, some ex game fan exclusive uh, content that's going in the base game tomorrow that's going to be really cool uh some um very special cards so well, um, i will put a link in the description for where that occurs at depending on when this gets released here yeah sure. as well as of course in the description i'll put the uh, game that you can find on game found it's being uh crowdfunded and if you're interested in the game you have an opportunity to go ahead and buy it now which will come with all the exclusive content when you pick it up on game found what's the price of the game and are there different options yeah, so your base game is £68 uh, instead of £100 at retail. And um, so roughly speaking, it's about 1.35, so it'd be like 135 you'd pay in retail instead of, um, I'll tell you what, uh, 68 is uh, is about 90, 90 bucks. Um, it's about a 35 Five percent saving. And you get a pretty massive game here. This is yeah. pretty massive. There's a lot of stuff here. The, where, the I think the sweet spot could be the, the gameplay tier. So that's 140 pounds, um, uh, which is about 190 dollars, and that gets you uh, the main two expansions. So you get the Dawn Guard expansion, which adds vampires, vampirism, a whole extra campaign of three chapters. So loads more gameplay. And then from the ashes adds the big dragon uh, encounters. It adds um, what we call the Ghost of the Blades, uh, and a series of encounters with uh, ghosts of your fallen companions. It adds loads more dungeon cards, more treasure cards, weapon cards, all kinds of stuff. It's really fun. We're also unlocking loads of mini campaigns, uh, flavored mini campaigns, a bandit campaign, a draugr mini campaign, a skeleton mini campaign, and, and more to come. Wow. And then, yeah, go ahead. Oh, there's one more, which is the deluxe tier, which of course adds all the miniatures and 
metal coins and and uh, neoprene mat and everything and, and has lots of that would be stuff the tier i would back yes that would be yeah I, I like everything that has to do with handling coins currency the, t the tokens a lot of fun this game doesn't need a whole lot of miniatures in my opinion though like what, what you got no, like the way what what we've done is the miniatures upgrade kit you swap out all the wandering monsters for you know all those tokens at the top for miniatures yep so when you're putting them down you've got miniatures on the board that are moving around that works. um it gives you another 10 hero miniatures so you can swap out the male nord for the sorry the female nord for the male nord and so on oh that's cool it gives you um uh are the um are the uh location indicators are those plastic no no they're not there it's 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 more about the character miniatures we went for Okay. Uh, uh, cool, cool thing too would be to have like a the little, you know, like you'd see like in a war room where you put those little. This is the location. Yeah. Like standing up. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I, I got, I got to yeah. look. I got to see what you guys are doing on there. But already, <laughs> just you could just tell from the quality of, it, of this tabletop, uh, like just just on virtual, it's really well done. So I have no, <laughs> I have no. And we're gonna make this, this is going to be free. We're going to aim to upgrade more uh, chapters in this. Keep this free so people can just play it for free um as well uh, we want to keep that and um there's also a free skirmish game in the miniatures upgrade kits we unlocked uh what's called the adventurous primer and it's the cards dice and rules to play uh, battles with the figures in the box oh wow yeah, there, yeah. there's so much content in this game this is going to be a pretty pretty massive thing i mean i would say it's going to do really well but it, it is already doing well so uh, it, it, there you go skyrim plus an excellent game attached to it great storyline great components uh really easy to learn yeah i i dig this game me and a bunch of my buddies would be down to play this game pretty great. much any time i got two friends of mine that i already know for a fact are going to want to pick up this game so there you go you probably got at least two backers from me <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot great of course no so thank you so much chris uh from modifius uh what, what was your role what's your role there i started the company uh okay, 10 so years ago with uh, my wife rita so you're the c-e-e-e-o uh uh well cco now chief creative officer as they Ooh. say <laughs> anyone fancy. that comes up with crazy ideas so um, this is is this your design no no we've got um three amazing uh, co-designers on our development team um juan javier and stefano who've uh, spent you know blood sweat and tears over the last three years working on this so well it is very easy to see they, put very of, encouraging. they must have been very big <laughs> skyrim fans oh they are yeah you, you have no idea <laughs> well i've seen a lot of ips i've been doing this for about six and a half years now and uh some of them cool. definitely show the creators uh love for the the ip whereas others are more of a little bit of a slapstick this you could tell huh, really easily how much that these guys have played the game and even if they even haven't played the game how much they've researched the game um yeah putting yeah. this together so it, a very excellent excellent game really really good job like not, not uh Thank not you. even like shining your shoes here i, I really personally think this is a really fun <laughs> game so I, I'm yeah i'm very mean, happy you uh came on the stream and uh showed I me the game you. Yeah, I love these types of games. So it's like, I don't want to put out a game that I don't want to sit and play for hours and hours and hours. And I've played this game for two or three years now without art, with basic pro, and it was still fun then. So it's, I'm so glad that it's looking great and people like it. You know. Yeah. No, I know what it's like to to put something together. I mean, as a reviewer, I never had the opportunity to put a game together and see the process and you know because people are saying it's, it's difficult and the, you know challenging to get all this stuff done so i'm like you know what like i think the beginning of this year i put out a campaign uh, just to see and my wife made a little puzzle game um and that yeah. was really exciting learning the steps and all of the intricacies of putting a game together and let's just say that eh, your game might be funding a little more than mine not by much but a little bit uh, <laughs> but I got to like have a taste of like what it's like to put something together and uh, how much work and effort it, it takes to put something like this together must be pretty, uh, pretty stressful. Yeah. Even, even yeah. funding doesn't even matter because it's the stress and the time and the effort that it yeah, takes to put through it. It's yeah, pretty exhausting, but it is worth it when it's a fun game and we, we try and only work on games that we love. So and you um, get to have something out there that you like the community is going to love and the people that are yeah. attached to the IP are going to love. And it's just straight up a good game, which is nice. This game could be called like 
the adventures of fluffy bunnies and i'd still want to play it <laughs> which is right. it, it's important right um but okay yeah. that, i won't take any more of your time i've already taken up like almost three hours of your time before the stream and you know i i, I really appreciate it and i hope you had some fun teaching me the game and hopefully you guys yeah, watching had a little bit of fun yeah. hopefully the video got I never out, get, right? yeah i never get bored demoing it because it's it's good fun to play i mean uh you know you there's games and you're like, oh god, no, not again. And it's because every time it's different. I pick a different character, different build style, get different gear. It's you know, it's always interesting to see what your choices do. Well, I'm excited to see this one come out. I'm excited to actually talk about maybe after the stream when uh, I'm not recording, just a little bit about the Call to Arms game you have. Um, I was a oh, huge yeah, Warhammer fan. Yeah. I had thousands and thousands of dollars in Warhammer. We we have a whole mod on here that you can download for free, which is the whole starter set with all the miniatures and cards and rules and everything. You just straight up play it? Yeah. Ooh. Don't you need it. Awesome. Don't need to set up it's got all the cool scenery in it as well. It's got all the, like, the, dun the uh, Draugr dungeons and uh, Bleak Falls Barrow arches and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you're going to make me put uh, a lot of links in the description, I think. But that's okay. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Well, I'm going to end the stream here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to playthroughing a game with you next time. Like, usually I say see you next time, but I'm not really seeing you. It's just the game here. So, next time. <laughs>